This is a special episode from the Pre-Coronavirus Warning Episode Series Vault. What have you given? What have you given? The title of this lesson is called Your Check is on its way. Your check is on its way. Now, now the bad thing about this is that the world looks at this and, and, say, and see the word check and they think material. And it's, it's, you know, and even some Christians, but it's, in a sense it's not your fault because in some of the ministries that you go to, every time they mention check, they add dollars and cents after it so you tend to think that check means money when in the spirit of God mentioned check sometimes is check yourself or check him out or check this out it's a, it's a blessing to understand what God is saying to us when he speaks to us because sometimes he doesn't give us a reason as to why he's saying anything. Sometimes he gives us a warning and to us we stray. And if you want to catch on to the movement of God, you need to catch on to the fivefold ministry because there still are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Again, some of you in the building don't know that because some of you have never met a true apostle. You've met people that bought their way into offices or that were voted into offices or people that stepped into offices by intrusion or by force. The scripture says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent taken by force. So people have been reaching up in the spirit, snatching things. And because some of us don't know what's real and what's not, it's easy for us to be tricked, deceived, or fooled. Wickedness was all over the land in the days of Noah. But Noah knew God. And God told him in verse 18, of chapter 6 of Genesis in the King James Version, but with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, that's him, his three sons, his wife, and his son's wife, the number eight. Now let, let's stop right there for a minute, and if you recording this, you really want to catch this. I know you've heard about this being the year of new beginning, right, 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 right. Everybody's telling you that, that this is the year of new beginning. And uh, many pastors and preachers and teachers and, and people from sent by God and some that are trying to impersonate those sent by God are telling you that this is the year of new beginning. And therefore, they're telling you to look forward to something, to look forward to blessings, to look forward to good things, to look forward to things. And that's true, because your check is on its way. But the question is, what kind of check are you going to get? Yeah, yeah. See, the people in the days of Noah, they got a check too. Sure did, when God closed that ark, and Noah, his wife, and his three sons, and their wives, and all the animals God told him to bring in with him, they all went in the ark. God closed the door, because there wasn't no doorknob on the door, and everybody began to get paid. When the flood came, and it, it went higher than the highest mountain all over the earth, everything outside of the ark was destroyed. Everything and everyone that was in the ark was protected. So either way, there was a paycheck. Come on, some of y'all work 40 hours a week, and you bring home a nice fat paycheck. Some of y'all work one hour a day, and you bring home a salary paycheck. Either way, a paycheck is a paycheck. 
Either it's going to be good or it's going to be bad. Let's deal with this number eight for a minute. In the Strong's Complete Topical Index to the Bible, I, I, I want to talk about, as God give it to me, all right, well, all right, Lord, I, all right. Eight, new beginning. In the Strong's Complete Topical Index to the Bible, it will tell you eight, when it refers to men in the Bible, is the number of new beginning. Now, the word new, also in the Strong's Complete Topical Index to the Bible, means something recent or fresh. The word new means something recent or fresh. Eight, new beginning. Eight means new beginning, and new means something recent or fresh. Again, some of you are just going to get information and not revelation. It's very important that God reveal the meaning of what he's saying to you because revelation is a very important thing to receive from God because unless God gives you his wisdom or his Sophia, which that word means wisdom, unless he gives you that, then you wouldn't even understand what you're reading. You can sit there and read the Bible from cover to cover, every jot and every tittle, and you won't understand nothing you're reading at all. If we understood what we were reading, wouldn't the world be scared and fear God? Everyone that picks up a Bible anyway? The number eight, again, means new beginnings. Now, the Lord, I said, Lord, there's something about that. I need to know what eight means. I need to know in detail what does the number eight, the word E-I-G-H-T, actually have to do with eight meaning new beginning when it comes to man. Because I, I'll tell you, the Lord taught me to study, and I like to research. And a lot of times it's hard when me and people sit down and study and everything together because I, you know, I, I love to study so much, and it's the honest God, truth is God is my judge. I can study all night long and not get tired. I can go hear some teaching for two or three hours and not want to buzz and get excited because I have a hunger for the word. And, and it's, not, it's not unusual that I would because God has given me a vision. There's something I'm hoping for. There's something I'm having faith in him about. And, and what it takes for me to get there is to have a hunger and to deny myself and my flesh even when being tired and just uh, hunger and thirst after, the, after, the, after God's righteousness that I may be filled. In the Strong's Dictionary, the word eight in the English is translated from the Hebrew word shemona. Shemona which actually is from another Hebrew word, Charmain, which through the idea of plumpness, because Charmain means, it, it, it means a lot, it means robust, it means big. Uh, now this is where some of y'all might get lost, but you know, praise God, and again, if you're writing, taking notes, or recording this, play it back again and again, and God will give you revelation. I'll start over again. The word eight, it's from the Hebrew word Shimona, which is from Charmaine through the idea of plumpness. Okay? Eight or uh, Shimona is also a cardinal, excuse me, a cardinal number, which a cardinal number is a number such as one, five, fifteen, that is used in simple counting and that indicates how many elements there are in an assemblage. Okay, like you could, you can, a cardinal number would be a number that is easy for you to take and count with, like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5 being a, a cardinal number, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1 being a, a cardinal number. <coughs> <clears throat> so it's used in simple counting, and it indicates how many elements there are in an assemblage. Thank you, Lord. 8 also means... The number eight, E I G H T, as if a surplus above the perfect number seven. Now, when I look up surplus, surplus in the Webster's means the amount that remains when use or need is satisfied. I, I know, I know, it don't make sense. But again, some are going to be informed, and to some, God is going to reveal. 
That's a, that's a blessing. Because I'm still trying to chew on it and understand it myself. <laughs> you know, none of us is, are deep. For as high as the heavens are from the earth, so are his ways and our ways and his thoughts and our thoughts. So ain't none of us on his level. Now, again, surplus means the amount that remains when use or need is satisfied. And it also means an excess of receipts over disbursements. <laughs> disbursements means funds paid out. Now, as the Lord, as the Lord used me, now, now allow it to be put into understanding. So that that way it would make sense to you and you would see how all of this correlates and connects. If the number seven means completion, then that means when seven got here and went out, where you are is where you are, right? Now, if where you are is where you are, and then the number eight, is a number that is an excess of receipts over disbursements or funds paid out, that means that what you, where you ended up last year, you're going to get the excess this year. <laughs> now, brethren and saints and those that are not even saved, now comes the meat of the word. If you sold in the flesh last year, then your increase this year will be from the flesh. If you sold in the spirit last year, then your excess or your increase is going to be in this number eight, in the spirit, if you sown in the spirit. Wherever you sown, because seven is completion, so in other words, <laughs> Seven is, 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 was used as a means of satisfaction. God made everything on the sixth day and on the seventh day he rested. He didn't go to sleep. Don't get it twisted now. He's, our God is not weak. Allah might be, but Jehovah God is not. On the seventh day he rested. He looked at everything and when he looked at everything he saw that it was all good. And for those of you who like to study and you have a Strong's, you do the work. Look up, it was good in the Strong's and you'll be surprised at what you found. find. But one word you will find is well. It was well. It was perfect. It was whole. God looked at it and he didn't see nothing wrong. No flaw. No error. He made man. There was nothing wrong with Adam. Adam wasn't weak. Adam wasn't scared. Adam only knew what God said to do. Adam knew God. Adam obeyed God. Adam had fellowship with God. Adam didn't worry. Adam didn't get sick. Adam didn't even go to sleep. The Lord had to cause him to fall into a deep sleep where God reached into him, pulled out a rib, and made one man. It was all good. It was enough. It was satisfactory. It was approved by God. The number eight is the excess. I tell you the honest God, true God has been warning so many people last year. Some of you intercessors know what God is talking about. Listen, brother pastors, we're in the eighth year, 2008. How many of your congregation are you interceding for? Are you holding your position as shepherd seriously? Or is it just a job? Again, God sends me to different Bible studies. You'd be surprised of the spiritual ignorance that God has allowed me to see in the places of worship. And it's affecting the congregation because certain things that they don't know, they should know. 
They shouldn't just be informed. There should be someone in their life that God can use as a vessel to reveal things to. God is not the author of confusion. The Lord ain't got to compete with nobody. Brethren, we are all members of one body. Again, there's some people God led me to. To ask them, open the door, let God use my gift to minister to the congregation. Because actually some of the congregation that go to your ministries call this ministry. Y'all get the support. But God knows the Lord used me to do the interceding sometime. And to God be the glory. Because when you talk about new beginning, we got to close with this. When those eight walked out of the ark, everything was changed. There was no other humans. All of the ferocious dinosaurs in them were dead. The ground looked different. Everything was new. It was so new that the last bird that was sent out didn't even come back <laughs> because he saw new things. And then God began to make a new covenant with Noah. A new covenant. Why? Because of his faith. Because of his faith. Because of his work, because of his labor, because of his obedience. Come on, brother pastors, tell the truth. It don't matter how much money a person put into the ministry. That's not what's going to give them the increase in 2008. Tell them the truth. What gives you your increase this year is what you did last year. What you sold last year. What you planted last year. What you watered last year. What you did for the Lord last year. How you trusted him last year. How you followed him last year. How you stayed in prayer last year. This year is the excess. But no matter what, there's going to be a newness of something. If you didn't do those things this year, last year, then you can do them this year. If nothing else is new, allow it to be the change of your will. Scratch the devil off your will list and write the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, the Lord will bless you more than you could even imagine. He will bless you. There is none like him. He will bless you. This was a special clip from the pre-coronavirus warning episode series vault.